Hi, I'm Matt Brennan. I am with Collective Sun. I am the VP of Sales here, and I am also with Cheyenne Huffer. She is a project manager at Collective Sun. Hi, everyone. Well, thanks for joining me today, Cheyenne. And we're going to just put together here a quick video on our commissioning protocol. Um, just want to spend a few minutes talking about this. Uh, our contractors sometimes have questions about this, and our nonprofits do as well. They don't always know um, some of the behind the work. Uh, behind the scenes work that we're doing um, to ensure that these systems are installed correctly. Um, and for those of you who don't know Collective Sun, we finance uh, solar projects across the country uh, uh, for nonprofits. And we've, we work in, um, we've worked in a, about a 20, a little more than 20 states. And uh, for contractors that do know us, this will be familiar and it'll be a high level overview. Um, so before we, we share, I'll share my screen in a minute of, of this commissioning report and protocol. The reason why we do this is that Collective Sun owns these systems for at least six years um, on all of our systems. That's a good thing, I believe, for our nonprofits. Um, we own, operate, and maintain it. We're responsible for it. And as such, uh, we want to make sure the system is working as, as it was engineered to and designed to. So we pay particular attention um, to make sure that when the system is built, we commission it to make sure it's performing as designed. And we're just here um, to do a high level summary of that. Um, not, and we'll, hopefully we'll have more videos um, with a detailed summary. So Cheyenne, I'm gonna share my screen. We're gonna talk, just I'm gonna ask you some questions about this. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna share is the spreadsheet that we share with all of our contractors. Now, when we, you know, a lot of our contractors are uh, repeat customers. They've done a number of these. So this is, they, they, they're familiar with this. But when we have a new contractor, we have an onboarding process that we, we go through this with them and we let them know basically what the expectations are. Because of course, we're collecting documentation from our contractors all along the way when we do a new, a new project. As we move through construction, Cheyenne is one of the project managers. She is collecting documents, making sure the milestones are met. And then uh, when they're met, that we have the documentation that confirms all of that. But at the, end of the uh, at the end of construction, when the system is up and running, we have this commissioning report. And this is the spreadsheet that we share with them. And we also have um, some companion photos for all of our projects that our contractors take. And I'll, I'm gonna share an example of that as well. So, in China, I'll ask you some questions just a second here. Mm -hmm. um, but the basic, the basic of this is that uh, exhibits one or two a basic project description and equipment. We want to make sure that we have um, documentation from the contract of what was installed, and that with an exhibit three that it matches the as built. And for those of you, uh, maybe a nonprofit that aren't familiar with the term as built, that's literally uh, this, how the system the uh, was built, um, the as built because it may not match exactly the plans that maybe we engineered six months ago when the system uh, was first designed because maybe a supply chain issue. We didn't get the tier one solar module uh, that we first uh, slated for this. So we use another tier one module, for example, that would be reflected here. And exhibits four through six are some really specific testing that we do to make sure that all the wire runs have the proper integrity. Um, and that everything is working as it should. So Cheyenne, I'm gonna share the first exhibit, which is the project description and equipment specifications. Can, and can you talk a little bit about what this is? Yeah, of course. So this first tab is just the overview of the project. Um, make sure that the system address matches what is on the design plans, that the system size that was built also matches the as builds. If you scroll down, we also review the material and um, making sure that the right model was used compared to the as builds. So this is just a way to double check that the equipment and the size of the system matches what was planned or what was designed, um, either in the original plans or the as builds, depending on if anything changed. Yeah, so this sounds like, you know, we're double and triple checking things. Um, mm -hmm. so all along the way, Cheyenne, for example, when um, one of the milestones on any construction project is delivery of materials. So we are at that point, we're confirming that the right 
uh, materials were delivered, correct? That's correct. And then we're doing it again at the end. So this is, a, you can almost say this is like a triple check at, at, the, at this mm -hmm. stage. Great. Exhibit three, we mentioned earlier, it's the, um, the as-built. And this is a checklist that all the contractors go through. Um, and they're the ones checking this off. And again, Chan, could you talk a little bit about what the um, as-built uh, documentation is? So this, there's about 100 rows or so of different checklist items. And we call these the punch list items where the contractor will go through each one and check off once it has been completed. Um, for example, making sure that the site is cleaned up, making sure that all the modules are connected according to the plans, um, that all terminal store check, checks have been uh, completed and that they're correct, um, that there's internet connection and so forth and so forth. Just a way to double check their work and for us to confirm that everything's been completed before we close out the project. So for contractors on this, I mean, you know, uh, it's, it's great for us and for our contractors to be on the same page that, you know, these, these steps were followed. And this is really best practices. A lot of our contractors do this kind of thing anyway. You know, they have their own internal processes for, you know, uh, their own completion checklist. And so this is just another level of doing that or a companion to doing that. And it's absolutely a best practice. And uh, all the contracts that we've worked with over the years, um, you know, of course they're comfortable doing this. And it's great for the nonprofit because they can be ensured that, you know, this is being, you know, looked at um, in detail. And I mentioned earlier, Cheyenne, that with the as builts this is a, sort of some companion photos. So I'm gonna share just an example of one of our projects. Um, with one of our contractors, that these are the kinds of things we ask for. Um, can you talk a little bit about what some of these pictures are and you know what, what, yeah. why it's important? So along with our commissioning report, we have um, a photo requirement document that we send out to the contractors. And it typically consists of around 70 photos or, or so where we just look at every part of the solar system. So wiring under the panels, the exact panels, the inverters, the internal wiring, and so forth, um, just to make sure that everything is built. These photos get reviewed by our one of our third-party engineers um, just to confirm everything is A-OK -okay before moving forward. Great. And so we have, it's, it's fantastic to have documentation, you know, of the model number and, and um, you know, the, which inverter was installed and where it's actually located. All that gets, gets reflected here, and that's part of the as built. So, going back to the uh, commissioning protocol, exhibits four through six, um, that has to do with um, really testing a lot of the wire runs. Now, a lot of contractors will recognize this as a mega test, and there are some other tests on here as well. But, high level, Cheyenne, what, what is it we're trying to do here um, through exhibits four through six? So we want to ensure that all the connections are made correctly and that the wires have good insulation in order to protect from any possible damage. Yeah, that's exactly right. We're, we're really testing the integrity of the system. Um, again, this is a best practice. You'll see this across the industry. This might not be exactly the same test um, or document the same way that our contractors do for their own internal processes, but they are familiar with this. And um, it's really looking out for the integrity of the system. Uh, it's one of the key pieces to make sure that we can sign off on this and commission it. So that's basically the basic summary of what we do at commissioning. And uh, Cheyenne, thank you. This is, I think it's a very good summary of what we do. And again, why it's important. We want the system to operate as it should. Um, you know, so we're aligned with our nonprofit clients. Um, you know, if they weren't working with us, they, they, they would want their system working properly and we're here to ensure that it does. And uh, hopefully uh, it will give us the opportunity to work with them. And uh, thanks for your time, Cheyenne. We really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> thanks.